Well, now in order to do the convolutional neural network for the fault diagnosis, I'm just importing some basic library here the first. This is the picture of the fault and this is the load conditions. First, I'm going to import the data set that I've created. And in the next time, I'm just going to do the standard scaling of all the features. Like from A1 to A4, I'm just going to scale them. Save in my data, okay. I need to initialize it. There you go. The data has been normal, um, standardized. And if I see the data set, this is how it looks like. All right. So this is the TC name we have just so uh, that we have we just saw before this, which was like this. This is how our TC name looks like. The data is entirely mixed up, and we cannot separate uh, the random forest itself is not able to separate between the faulty data and the healthy data. All right. So we are going to use the CNN for that matter. And in this case, I'm using a window length of 100 and a stride of 200. What does that mean? That basically means is, this my data go? Yeah. And this is my data. For the 100th time step, I'll take a box and that will be my input to the CNN. Then I'm going to skip next 200 uh, instances and then I'm going to take another box of 100 instances and that will be my input to the CNN. This uh, sprite, this stride variable and window length are variable for the CNN or for this method, you can change iterate and see how, what suits for your uh, use case. I tried with a different, uh, different version. But uh, what happens when you increase the stride, you, you, you use less amount of memory or you use less training data, which is a good thing. If your CNN is able to train with less amount of data, then it's a good thing for you. All right, then I'm just using the, uh, the method that I have created in the last, uh, last uh, series of video for convolution neural network. I'm going to initialize two empty lists, X and Y. Then this is the first. Uh, this is the first. This is the first one. So in this data frame, I'm going to see. I'm going to first filter whichever DF fault equal to equal to K. So if it is the fault one, first I will uh, take all the. First I will take out the data set, the part of data set that has the F as its label that will be saved in my DF temp one. Then I'm going to select according to the load conditions. Here, my load conditions vary from zero to 0 0.9. So for each load condition, I'm going to make this data set. And for the X value, I'm just going to append with the first, first element to the window length and all the features. That's it, that's it. So, if I just run it, it should be running quite fast. Okay, I just need to run it from the first. If you have any doubt in how this uh, algorithm works, you can check my previous solar panel fault diagnosis data set using CNN. There I have step-by-step -step explained each and every part of this uh, of this block of code, so you can refer to that one. But for now, in a in a rough way, you can say I'm just using hundred uh, window length and all the features there to give an idea of what it looks like. If I just do x dot shape, well, this is the total number of examples in my x. This is the my window length or each sample has a hundred rows, five feature, and one is the extra dimension for the convolution neural network uh, for the default input of the convolution neural network. If I do y dot shape, well, y dot shape looks something like this. And if I do this, well, it has two, two uh, it has created two uh, 
finally two neurons will be there i can do it with one neurons neuron as well but just just for the sake i did it two neurons and that is it because i am just using the say, uh, the default one that i created in the last uh, last uh, cnn video so i'm just using that one you can just uh, change the f value to 0 and h value to 1 and that will that will that should be it you can use the uh, sigmoid function as well all right now i'm going to do a piece new visualization and how am i going to do it as i've shown you here x 0 Well, my one, the first every element, each element of my X has hundred uh, rows, five uh, columns, and one. You can ignore this one. This is just for the sake of convolutional neural network. So it has a hundred cross five dimension. What I'm going to do? I'm going to multiply this two. Like I'm going to make it a five hundred dimensional vector so that I can do a dimensionality reduction of that. So basically, I want to reshape into a five. 500 element uh, vector, a vector of 500 element, and then I'm going to reduce the dimensionality of each and every element. Like I have total seven one three eight elements, so I'll do this for seven one three eight element each element. I'm just going to reshape them into a 500 vector. This is what I did. X dot reshape 500 in. Uh, the first vector is going to be just like that then in the next one i'm just going to multiply them like this will be my 500 vector then i'm going to do the dimensionality reduction as i have shown before into a two dimensional space if i run this code like i right now i want to see if i take the feature like if i take my window length of feature instead of just one point if i take a Trip of hundred uh, data set is is my more is is it uh, des, um, different from one another? So you can see there is some cloud. We can see maybe if I plot it in the three dimensional curve, I can see some difference. But right now it is also pretty much mixed up. But still, it is better. It's somewhat better than the last case that I that we saw, like uh, in this one. Yep, this one it was pretty mixed up. But here you can see there is some discrimination. Maybe if I add one another dimension, I can clearly see some like you can. It may be separable. So that is it. There was one um, like I just want to see the TSNI component before I do before I put it in inside my convolutional neural network. The next step I am just going to divide it into my test and train. Test and train. Thirty percent for the training and seventy percent for the training. Then I'm going to create my CNN model. Finally, my number of classes is two at the output. Okay, so this is how my uh, convolutional neural network looks like. And at last, I'm using the softness function, and my loss is categorical cross and entropy with Adam optimized. Matrices I'm using is accuracy. All right. Then I will use a batch size of one twenty eight, and I'll just train it for five epoch. Okay. In the first, in the very first one, I am getting a validation accuracy of one, which is extremely good, because in the last case, in a random while using the random forest, it was giving me very poor performance on the validation data. Here I am using the validation data as x test and y test, as I show you before, on the random forest, the performance on x test and y test was only sixty percent, whereas in CNN I am using hundred percent accuracy. Then I am going to save this model. The CNN model, and I created this small function to get the output, to get the CNN output, which have two neurons, into my uh, H or F. So it will first get the arg mix of Y prep, then do the inverse encoding for the final output. So first, I'm doing the, uh, I'm using the model to predict on X text that will help shape in the Y prep. And I'll use this function inverse result, inverse transform result, on my y pred and y test to get the capital y. Then I can do the. See, here is clearly visible that on my test set is clearly able to separate all the data. 
now that I'm using a length of data, now instead of using a single point, I'm using an entire column of uh, 100 elements in to feed into my convolution neural network. My performance is increased significantly for this, this case. All right, now I want to do the visualization of output. Like I did the PSNI at the initially before I did anything, before I did anything just of my input data. I want to do the CNN, I want to see the PSNI once at this part, like uh, this one after 128, like when uh, I did my convolutional steps, then I'm using the flattened layer, then the fully connected one. This after this fully connected layer where I have 128 neurons for each element for each input, I will have 128 elements. So I'm going to do that for all the input data I have. And then I'm going to do a piece me for that, like the dimensional reduced dimension in two dimensional to see how is have have has this uh, trained CNN model is able to separate my data. All right. For that. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, create a dummy CNN model where my input will be same as the CNN model, but my output will be the fifth layer, which is my fifth layer is zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is will be my fifth layer. That will be my output. All right. So I'm using this dummy CNN to predict on the X train value, whichever my X train was. That will be my Y viz. If I well, now if I do do y vis, well, it has a shape of four nine nine six, which is same as my x train, and uh, the number of features inside it is one twenty. That will be my output from this layer. From this layer, all right. Now I'm going to use this y vis to do a dimensionality reduction that I'm going to feed transform on this and reduce into a two dimensional component TC. Then the rest is same what I did. I just created a data frame from column one, column two. Here is principal component. I just mystically put it principal component, this TC. I'm just going to run it. Well, now I can see that now the TCNI is clearly able to separate the data once we have passed it through the convolution, the trained convolutional neural network. And that was the entire goal. We just wanted to make it separable. Now, as the TCNI is able to separate this, then any, any simple neural network at the output of 128 uh, layer will be able to separate this. Thing. So that was the entire goal of this one. Just outside the convolutional network, our data becomes separable. That was it. Initially, just before the input, our data was like this. When though we used the strip of data, the window length of entire data set, still it was not able to clearly separate. But there is, it is better than the previous case where we just get a mess of data, mess up uh, all the labels were messed up. Okay, so I hope this uh, this uh, tutorial was uh, valuable to you to do any kind of fault diagnosis, be, being specific to the <laughs> gear set data, uh, data set. Here only there were two labels. Maybe I hope you can do it for when there are more labels available. I'll try to do it as well, but I didn't find any data set for that. I'll try to find one and do that one again. Till then, bye-bye. Okay.